Hey students, parents, guardians, uh, thank you so much for watching this video with your child. I am Steve Auslander. And I'm Emily Hudson. And we're fifth grade teachers and we are so excited to share all about our favorite project that we do every year. In fact, any fifth grade student in any IB school anywhere in the world, doesn't matter where they live, if they're in an IB school as a fifth grade student, they are doing exhibition as well. It's a huge project and we love it because it's real. It's a real world project where students select an issue that they're passionate about, a real world issue, and um, they... Yeah, and it's a very complex um, project, and I know, we know that sometimes it can be very overwhelming for not only the students, but for you as parents. So we thought it would be a good idea to kind of go through the expectations of the project. That way you know what your child should be doing, and you can ask questions and make sure that they're on task and and are making progress with their project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we decided we would start kind of with the end in mind. So the project ex the project is due on Wednesday the 18th, which is two days before exhibition day. We do that because we want them to present to the class so we can score their, their presentation uh, before it gets chaotic and crazy and amazing on exhibition day. So the project itself is due on the 18th. But exhibition day, and you are invited. You can, if you want to come, if you can, because it's quite, quite an experience. Friday the twentieth, from eight forty-five a.m. to ten fifteen a.m. is exhibition day, and that's when your your child and all the fifth grade students at Allisonville will present to the community, and they'll share what they learned and what they did to help. Um, so that's that's kind of the end in mind. And when you come to Allisonville on that morning. Uh, the students are going to be in different spots within the building because we've discovered and learned over the years that when they're all together in the cafeteria or the gym it's just too loud and chaotic so they will be spread out but you'll have we'll have people here to hand out maps to let you know where your child will be presenting yeah, yeah great okay so let's start from the beginning now so exhibition as we mentioned students select real-world issues that, they, that they're passionate about. So some, some students might be studying things like um, vaping. That's an issue right now in the world. Um, should, should it be banned? Should, should it, uh, the flavorings be banned? We have issues, uh, issues such as plastic pollution. That's a big one. Yeah. There's, what are some of the other issues? You uh, some of the others that we've seen are LGBTQ rights, um, specifically the laws. Um, some of the laws that are keeping LGBTQ members from living the lives that are equal to other people. Uh, you already said vaping, smoking, uh, drugs. I have a group that is talking about uh, homelessness. Animal testing is mm -hmm. one of uh, my favorite because I think it's such an is interesting issue. There's multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great ways that kids can take action. So these are possible issues. Your child has already selected an issue. Um, so after they select their issue, can you close it off for me, Jake? After they select their issue, um, it's the research process. And we always find that the kids need to start with really great questions, open-ended questions, questions about their issue. So things like causation, what caused this issue? How, it, how does it affect people? How does this issue affect animals? How does it affect, you know, there's a lot of causation. So they need a lot of good causation questions. If it's animal testing, causation, why do they, why do scientists test on animals? Mm -hmm. How does the testing affect the animals? How does the testing actually affect humans? Things like that, cause and effect. And each teacher has done a lot of work with their students with helping them develop these questions along with Mrs. Weeger in the Media Center. She has also been teaching lessons to kind of help them create those questions. Um, so they should have within their research notes, whether that's on Google Docs or they're handwriting their notes, they should have their questions listed and then as they find research that fits, they'll put it with that question. Absolutely. So causation is big. We also really focus on perspectives. So we want to hear um, if it's a, a controversial issue, maybe both sides of the issue, but not always both sides. Sometimes you want to hear from different people. So for example, um, vaping, we mentioned, we want to hear from the perspective of somebody who maybe owns a vape shop, maybe the perspective of somebody who is, is, is vaping. 
maybe from the perspective of a legislator who's trying to ban it. So through their research, they're trying to identify different perspectives and take notes about those perspectives. And then with connection, uh, sometimes that's a hard one for the kids, but really looking at how their issue connects to things going on within their community, within their state, and even within our world. And then how that issue has changed over time. For example, if you think about plastic recycling, when I was a girl, that didn't exist. And so now, how plastic is kind of taking over our world, how, what was it 20 years, what was it like 20 years ago? What's it like now? What do you think it's gonna be like 20 years in the future? The problem is just getting worse and worse yeah. and worse, and things like that. And uh, the big one also is form. Form is basically a general definition of the issue. So plastic pollution, you, they would say, you know, what, what is plastic pollution? How much plastic is in the ocean? Um, they would have some basic mm -hmm. percentages, numbers, just identifying the problem. Mm -hmm. Defining specific parts of their issue. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, it starts with the questions, and then the kids are doing research. So research um, can be on books, it could be videos, it could be uh, definitely articles online. Mrs. Weger has made a lot of great uh, links available on the Allisonville Media Center page. Um, so there, there's tons of resources for the kids um, to, to be generating a lot of research, which is, again, based on the questions. And teachers have created different ways for the kids to take their notes. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I use Google, Google Docs, and the kids submit them. Most of my students use Google Docs, but I do have two kids who love writing out all of their information by hand in their notebook. So it's really whatever your child feels most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But definitely um, ask your child to show you their notes because they should either have them in a folder, like a physical folder or a digital folder. Mm -hmm. they, should, they have access to anything that they do at school. They have access. If you go through Rapid Identity, you can get all their notes from their drive. Did yeah. we talk about primary source we didn't. yet? We didn't. Primary source is important, so obviously that is uh, that could be a person or an article. We really encourage the kids to find an actual person or organization that they can call an expert in the field, um, and that's something that teachers do a good job of helping them, you know, make those connections. I know Mrs. Weger does as well, uh, so we would love for them to interview a person or an organization so they can just add even more research to their project. And I'm glad you brought that up. We forgot to say uh, responsibility. Oh, That's yeah. That's huge. That, honestly, probably one of the biggest questions mm -hmm. that your child really needs to ask is, how can I help? Right. First of all, who, who out there is helping with this issue, and how can I help? Um, so that would be a great, uh, for a primary source, like, she's, like Mrs. Uh, Hudson said, mm -hmm. identify an organization that's helping, just try to interview somebody there, and then learn about that organization. And see, ask them, how can I help? And that's a great way to get to action. Mm -hmm. So one of the huge pieces with the IB exhibition project is the action piece. So the kids are going to be researching, 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 learning, as much, becoming an expert as, as much as they can on their issue. And then they're going to identify after the research the best way that they can actually take action to help. And then they're going to take action. Uh, maybe they're going to volunteer. Maybe they're going to create, uh, write a blog post to raise awareness. There's a lot of different ways that kids can take action. They just want to maybe go out and inform people about the issue and educate others. We, It's okay for your child to want to raise money. We don't discourage that, but we also don't encourage it um, because we find that a lot of times that's not an effective action at this age. And so really getting them out there to volunteer or to educate others, those are great actions to take. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so they research, they learn a lot, they're an expert, they find out a way that they can take action to, to help uh, with this issue, and then they use their creativity, they, they have some choice in the matter on how do they create a product to share with the community on Exhibition Day. So on Exhibition Day, on, on Friday the 20th, uh, the kids in their groups, some kids are working in groups, some are working by themselves, um, but the kids with, with their partners uh, are going to have a presentation and they'll have some sort of creation to, to share with the community, whether it's a video, um, an art piece, uh, a, a trifold board. We, we really encourage kids to be creative, to show what they've learned and, mm -hmm. and share. Um, and it can be multiple products. I know in the past some kids have had 
a trifold along with an art piece or a trifold along with technology, and that's fine too. Whatever means they want to use to convey their message is great. But whatever they create should show that they've really mastered the causation of their issue, the perspectives, you know, the responsibility. All the stuff that they've learned should be evident in their presentation. Um, yeah. So, so that's that's the exhibition project, kind of in a nutshell, right there. Yes. Um, and again, it's uh, due on the 18th, and they'll present it to the class, and we'll score them. And in a moment, we're going to show you the rubric. We'll score them uh, on their presentation, um, and we'll score them on their creation. And, um, yeah. and and please just keep asking your child questions. Have them show you what they've accomplished. They're they're really proud when they're. Oh, are we still on? We're still on. We're still on. They're really proud of what they've accomplished. And the more you are engaged in their learning, the better the project's going to be. We're here to help as well. So if you ever have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to one of the fifth grade teachers, to Mrs. Weger, and, and we can help answer any questions you have. And ways that parents can help. So obviously the kids are mm -hmm. doing this in school, but, but, but um, they may need to do some research from home here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and ways that parents can help. Let's say your child is looking for a primary source. Maybe parents, you might know somebody um, who they could, they, could, they could speak to, or maybe you could help them with an email to reach out and, and identify it, uh, a primary source. Uh, that, that's a way that a parent can help. Yes, and we've also, we love having mentors in the building, so anytime you can come in and mentor a child and talk with them about their project, we would appreciate that as well. If kids need to, wanted to volunteer, obviously, you know, parents to help to, to drive here and there so definitely you don't want to wait till the last minute ask your child about their research ask them about what action they think they might want to take and uh, you know, the more they plan that ahead the better the project's going to be yeah all right that's it yeah High good five. job good job thank you let us know <laughs> if you, you have any questions okay and we wanted to add this to the video and that's uh, how we're how we're scoring your child's uh, project and so there's three ways. One is through like the note taking and each teacher kind of does it differently. So in my class, kids submit their notes on a weekly basis and I give them a score. I do the same. Uh, they don't submit it, but um, I sit down with them and they show me what they've accomplished for the week and they get 10 points every week that we talk about exhibition. And we'll be looking at citing sources and notes and things like that. So every, every uh, teacher does that separately and differently. But there's also a, uh, a speaking and listening score for the oral presentation and that is worth 32 points i believe and this is what we'll use so when they present in the classroom um and it's kind of a practice which is great so before exhibition they'll present to their class and this is when we will grade them and you can see at the top of the rubric the nonverbal skills we have the eye contact body language and poise and you can kind of read through those points four through one um, at this point in the year, they should obviously be better at all of these. They do a lot of presenting in fifth grade in front of their classes. Uh, and if they're comfortable with their topic, that body language and poise um, should be pretty high along with eye contact. You really just don't want them reading no. everything. But they can have note cards and talking points. And they can refer to those notes. Yeah, but we're not at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, there's the enthusiasm and elocution for verbal skills. Mm -hmm. We want it to be obvious that your child is passionate about um, the content, loud and clear, mm -hmm. big smile, positive. positive uh, mm -hmm. We can tell um, the positivity and the enthusiasm, and that's important. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, if it's a group presentation, if there's a group of three students and um, one student is doing a great job with the with the the nonverbal and the and the verbal skills, and another child maybe isn't doing as well. We we grade each child separately, so right. we want to make sure that you understood that as well. Right, and probably well, it is the most important part is the content. We want to make sure that they have become experts on their issue, and with the amount of time that we've been working on this in class and in media they should be an expert. And so we really want them to show off all the great content knowledge that they've learned throughout the process. So the subject knowledge and then how well it's organized. Did the timeline of how they present make sense? And then the mechanics with the grammar and the spelling. Yeah, so, uh, so that's one way that we're scoring mm -hmm. uh, your child. 
And the other way is through the product. We mentioned that the students, after they research and they take an action, they're going to create some sort of product to present to the community. And here is just a list of possible mm -hmm. creations, but there's endless creations that are uh, that your child can make. And like Mrs. Hudson mentioned, they can do more than one. Uh, and probably the most important part of the product is that they have put pride into the creation of their product. They didn't slap something together the night before. They didn't complete it on the bus ride to school, that they put a lot of thought into what they wanted their product to be. And that should show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then this is how we score that product. And here it says 4, 8, 12, 16, but we could certainly mm -hmm. have, have a multiplier and have each right. be worth more than four. Um, but uh, for four points is content and accuracy. So that's obviously incredibly important that the facts uh, and the content are accurate. Mm -hmm. And similar to the oral presentation rubric, the organization, um, is it well organized within the Google slide, on the trifold, within their art piece? When someone walks up and looks at it, does it make sense to them as they're reading through the information? And obviously the creativity in that effort, we want to see the pride. And if it's like a puppet show, like it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily, I mean, we want to make sure that, it, you know, that the, it's been scripted in an organized way. Right. Um, but then certainly the pride is through the creativity. Mm -hmm. Did your child put a lot of effort and creativity into to the project? and? You know, we score that accordingly. Uh, again, similar to the oral presentation within their product, we want to see that they're showing off all this great knowledge uh, that they've attained throughout this this project. And I, I especially like how we're pretty specific here. I'm an expert on the causation, change, and perspective of my issue. So throughout their presentation, their oral presentation, and with their product, we should be able to see the causation, the change in the perspective. For sure. And, uh, and lastly, we mentioned that we're going to be scoring their notes, but uh, here it's, we want to make sure that their, their sources are accurately uh, documented and that, um, that they are keeping track. If, they, if they've used a, a graphic, an image, they want to make sure that they've cited that source. Mm -hmm. Citing sources is really an important skill and we're uh, holding them accountable this year with the project. Yes. Yeah, so those are the rubrics that we'll be using, and let, let us know if you have any questions, and uh, thank you for watching this thank with your you. child.